You're using too much water. Oh, that's quite something, Robert. Really good. The rest of you, gather round and have a look at this. See the subtle use of colour and shading, giving a fluid appearance to the whole thing, making it appear to shift and change all the time. Well done, Robert. What are you going to call it? Change of weather on Rexall 4. Yes, I see. A sort of abstract title. Oh, no, it's supposed to be the change of weather on some distant planet. I'm keen on science fiction, you see. Well, it's very good, Robert. I'm sure we could hang it up in the classroom, if you wouldn't mind. No, fine. Ah, the bell. Well, that's it then. Pack up your things and go. Where'd you get the name Rexall for? Oh, I just dreamt it up. Why? Nothing. Good night, Robert. Good night, Miss. You coming for the bus? No, I go home a different way. Oh, well, see you then. See ya. Jaunt in and out of school like that, they'll catch you at it one day. Oh, don't worry, no one will notice. Well, not since you found out a way we can jaunt without using all those funny lights. Yeah, the hyperspatial zonal shift breakthrough, you mean? Yes, well, whatever it was called. Have a good day at school. No thanks. Oh, I wish you didn't have to go. It's a complete waste of time. You have to go to school, Stephen, or you'll have the authorities after you. And we can't have you drawing attention to yourself. Yes, I know, I know. It's all right for some, though, isn't it? What have you been doing today? Been for a swim and a sunbathe in the Caribbean. Galleon Island. Yeah, some people do have jam on it. Ah, oh, you can still go. One of the advantages of jaunting. Distance, no object. You sound like a travel brochure. <laughs> hey, listen, there was a funny thing today. Well, there's a kid in my class called Robert. Oh, yeah? Well, he did a painting. He called it Change of Weather on Rexall 4. So? So that's just what it was. I've been to that planet, and he'd drawn it exactly as it is. Exactly. Mm, interesting. Did you talk to him about it? Oh, sure. He said he made it up. You sure it wasn't just a coincidence? Not a chance. There was too much detail, and all correct. Whether he made it up, or whether it's been there, he drew Rexall 4 exactly as it is. Exactly as it looks when the weather is changing. Well, we're always on the lookout for new tomorrow people. Keep your eye on this Robert character, will you? Yeah, sure I will. But it'd have to be pretty well developed as a TP to jaunt as far as Rexall. What's well, a good 30 light years? Besides, I'd been bound to pick him up as soon as he started to break out. Well, seeing we're in the same school. Quite right. Well, what is he if he isn't one of us? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. There's something else been bothering me too. We've got this new teacher, well, a student really, on teaching practice. I think that once or twice I may have picked up some of her unspoken thoughts. Now that is interesting. Yes. And you like her too, John. She's a smasher. Just about your age.
Good night. 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 Sit down, Stephen. I want a word with you. I don't know quite how to put this. You hear voices? Your voices. Look, when I was about your age, which wasn't so long ago... Yes? Well, I had an imaginary friend, and I would speak to him sometimes. Only I didn't speak to him out loud. I don't... This Tim you were talking to just now, and that other one, John, I think you call him. Well, what I'm trying to say is that I quite understand. Speak to them by all means, but not out loud. You mean you can actually hear me when I'm talking to John and Tim? Yes, I can, and so can everyone else. Look, I don't want you to get the reputation for being a nutter. I'm surprised any of the other kids have said anything. That they don't, well, laugh at you. They don't laugh because they can't hear me. You're the only person who can. Stephen, I'm trying to help you. Please don't make fun of me. I'm not. But there's something I'd like to know, though. Do you hear John and Tim as well? Yes, of course. You do the voices very well. I only wish I had half your talent for that sort of thing. You do! What? You do have my talent. We're both telepathic. Don't be ridiculous. Look, Stephen, I'm trying to help you. I don't know much about your background, but there may be something. Is there anything worrying you? Is there something you feel only your secret friends should know? The ones you've invented, John and Tim? Well, you're right about there being something that... Only my secret friend should know. But you're wrong about them being imaginary. All right, they're real, they exist. They're ordinary people like you and me. Well, Tim isn't a person, of course. Well, he's a computer, actually. But John's a person, but he's not ordinary. Well, he's like you and me, another telepath. Do stop trying to involve me in your fantasies. You involved yourself. You are a telepath. I'm not telling you anything you, know, you don't know. You've just got to face up to it. See, I'm talking to you without moving my lips. I can cover my mouth and pinch my nose. The sound of my voice hasn't changed one bit. Because, well, you're not hearing it through your ears, and I'm not speaking through my mouth. No ventriloquist in the world could do that. We are the same, you and I and John. We are telepathic. You can read our minds and we can read yours. It's a trick. That's all a trick. Look, I don't know how you do it, Jameson, but it's nothing but a clever trick. A clever, stupid schoolboy trick. You think just because I'm a student teacher you can make fun of me? Well, I wanted to help you. Were you monitoring all that, Tim? Yes, Stephen. She is still afraid to face the truth about herself. But I am convinced she is one of us. Shall I go after her, Tim? No. She will be all right when she calms down. Perhaps you're right. Where's John? He's swimming again. Galleon Island. Why don't you join him? Why not? I'll join back to the lab for my things. Stephen! 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 I broke out. I thought I was going mad. Yeah, it can be a tough time. You bet. Your Elizabeth and Bondo is having rather a trying time, too. Well, at least you'll have me around to help her when it happens. Do not push her too hard, Stephen. It could be dangerous to tax her with what she is before she has fully realized it. You remember what it was like for you? We nearly lost you. Yes, in more ways than one. Yeah, well, we have to let her break out in her own time, like we did with you. Don't I know? It was horrible. Well, it may not be the best way, but at least we know it works. Now that Carol and Kenny are no longer living on Earth, we can't afford to take any chances with any new tomorrow people. I have to make it up to her somehow. Nothing like the old-fashioned way. Tomorrow I think I'll take a, an apple for my teacher. I thought you had to be a teacher of tiny tots to get one of these. I'm sorry about yesterday, Stephen, but that's all over and done with. 
Subject closed, OK? Yes. It's a nice apple. Tastes fresh. Where did you get it? I picked it myself. In January? In Australia. Tell me, have they ever trundled you in front of the school psychiatrist? It finds you a most interesting case. I never knew we had one. As far as I know, we don't. But I'm beginning to think it's time we got one. Well, anyway, I wouldn't tell him the things I tell you. Oh, no? What's so special about me, then? I know. Don't tell me. We're alike, you and I. That's it. The voices, Elizabeth. Remember, the voices you keep hearing. I've had just about enough of this. Stop bothering me. Stop following me around. And don't call me Elizabeth. I'm Miss Mbondo to you. Whew. Hey. Hi, Steve. What's eating her? Oh, nothing. What's up to your picture? It's changed. So it has. Still, I called it change of weather. Looks like it's taken a turn for the worse. Not a nice day for anyone living on Rexel 4. Did you know there really is a planet called Rexel 4? Really? No, what a strange coincidence. How does it change? <laughs> Don't know if it has, really. The paint's probably run a bit. Still looks quite good, though. Do you ever feel the urge to paint anything like that? Well, strange. Can't say I do. Painting's not my strong subject. <laughs> Isn't mine, either. I've never done anything like that before. It's like, well, something took possession of my hands and made me paint it. You don't happen to hear voices as well, do you? <laughs> Think I'm bonkers or something? No. What is 12 times 3, Tim? 63. Wrong, Tim. Oh, yes, of course. 36. It's these simple calculations, you know. Hey, Stephen. Stephen, come here a minute. Is that or is that not a view of QX5? You know, when the planet passes between its two suns and its figure of eight orbit. Sure looks like it. What are doing the observer? children's art competition. The judge had remarked on the skillful way the picture had been painted, so that the patterns of light within it appeared to change from time to time. Wasn't well, that just what your Robert's picture does? Yes. The artist, Gavin Watson, a keen science fiction fan, says the picture represents the surface of a planet he calls QX5, which orbits two suns. Can't be chance again. And he should get the name of the planet exactly right, and the galactic codification too. Not ours, remember. Just as your friend Robert does. But the chances against it are astronomical. Does it say where that kid goes to school? Uh, King's Bentley Comprehensive School in Warwickshire. That is doubly interesting. Last week there were serious disturbances at King's Bentley Comprehensive School. Fights among the pupils. The police had to be called. I wonder if that's just a coincidence. I think not. It correlates with another incident in Wales. A priest has exorcised a similar painting. He what? Exorcised. Exorcism, a ceremony to cast out devils. Bell, book and candle and all that? You must be joking. We're not in the dark ages, Tim. Nevertheless, he exorcised it. Why? People thought the picture showed heaven and hell alternately. And when it showed hell, the children in the local school were uncontrollable, extremely violent, seemingly possessed by the devil. <laughs>